Exploring the USRP, D200, and 10. Unveiling the power of software, defined, radio. Welcome to our in-depth exploration of the USRP B210, a pioneering device in the realm of software-defined radio. My name is Emma, and I'll be your guide through this fascinating world. Whether you're an enthusiast, researcher, or developer, this presentation is designed to enlighten and inspire. Let's start with the basics. Software-defined radio, or SDR, revolutionizes traditional radio communication by implementing components in software rather than hardware. This approach offers unparalleled flexibility, reconfigurability, and cost effectiveness. Imagine a single device capable of adapting to various wireless standards and frequencies with just a software update. This shift enables rapid prototyping easier maintenance, and the ability to keep pace with evolving communication technologies. From amateur radio operations to cutting-edge research and development, SDR's versatility knows no bounds. At the forefront of this innovation is Etis Research, founded by Matt Etis in 24. Their mission to make high-performance SDAR platforms accessible has led to the development of the USRP B210. This compact, USB-powered device boasts dual-channel transceiver capabilities and a wide frequency range, making it an indispensable tool for diverse applications. The B210 specifications are tailored to meet the demands of both researchers and developers, offering high bandwidth and a broad spectrum of frequencies. Its compact design belies its potential for complex wireless experiments and projects. So, what sets the USRP B210 apart in research and development? The answer lies in its flexibility across various bands and protocols, ease of integration with popular SDR software like GNU Radio, robust community support, and the commitment to continuous updates. These factors combined create an ecosystem that fosters innovation. From pushing the boundaries of IoT connectivity to exploring the frontiers of wireless communication, extracts those two channels and decodes them simultaneously. OpenCPN, which can use GPSD as a data source, then plots the broadcasting ships. We can see the smaller vessel has just... Whenever any channel in this list becomes active, a line is drawn on the FFT plot. The green line is the channel that can be heard. Here we have pager message transmissions, so they continually broadcast... The aircraft communications and reporting system are seen and heard here. This application graphically presents the results used to sniff OFDM-based 802.11. This was a brief overview of some of the applications that work with the USRP B200 and B210. The wide frequency coverage will allow you to experiment with many more RF applications. The USRP B210 is the device of choice for those who dare to innovate. But how does it compare to other devices in the market? Let's consider we'll alternatives, like the HACK RF. For now, you can think of this zero point as being the center. And the ADALM, Pluto Dota. While each has its merits, the USRP B210 stands out for its dual channel capability, wider frequency range, and the might of Edis Research's community backing. Whether you prioritize MIMO capabilities or are looking for an educational tool, understanding these differences is key to making the right choice for your project. For those on a budget, clone devices offer an affordable entry point. Available from various manufacturers on platforms, such as AliExpress, these clones mimic the original specifications but may vary in quality control and support. Before we dive into the world of applications, let's briefly explore another notable device in this DR landscape. 
the Limestar Mini. This open source, USB powered board is designed for more complex. With its full duplex transceiver capability and support for MIMO, the Limestar Mini is particularly appealing for projects requiring advanced wireless experimentation. While not a direct competitor to the USRP B210, in all aspects, the Limus DR Mini's open source nature and strong community backing make it an attractive option for developers seeking deep customization capabilities. Now let's delve into a fascinating application of SDR technology, the Portsdown Amateur Television, 8VV, transmitter system. Born out of the need for an affordable digital ATV solution, Portsdown has evolved since its inception in the early 2010s, leveraging various SDR platforms. Initially, based on the Raspberry Pi and R TLSDR, the project later adapted to utilize more capable SDR devices. Today, Portsdown supports several SDR options, including the Lime SDR Mini and USRP V210. The choice between these often hinges on the desired transmission parameters and personal preference. The specific possibilities of different SDRs with Portsdown, Lime SDR Mini, ideal for higher bandwidth transmissions, e.g. 1080p, due to its MIMO capabilities and higher frequency stability. USRP B210 offers flexibility with its dual channel feature suitable for simultaneous transmission and reception or more complex FTV experiments. However, there is no currently supported driver to integrate with the existing ports down software. GNU Radio Flowgraphs and DVBS2 transmitter example at the heart of many SDR applications, including ports down, lie GNU, radio flowgraphs. These visual representations of signal processing flows enable developers to design and implement complex radio systems intuitively. Here are some screenshots of GNU Radio Companion, GRC, highlighting flowgraph creation. Let's consider an example implementing a DVBS2 transmitter using GN radio and an SDR device like the USRP B210. This involves crafting a flow graph that encompasses. There is the signal source. This is used to generating a baseband DVBS2 signal. The modulation block. This is used for mapping the signal onto a carrier wave. The filtering and amplification block. This is used in preparing the signal for transmission. The USRP sync block. This is where we engage in transmitting the final signal via the USRP B210. Example DVBS 2 transmitter flow graph simplified for audio description. Here are the blocks. The input transport stream TS file source. The processing blocks, stream to packed scrambler DVB stew modulator root, raised cosine filter rational resampler, the output. USRP B210 sync, configured for transmission parameters. Conclusion and closing, remember that the intersection of SDR technology and innovative projects like ports down is where the future of wireless communication is being shaped. Whether through the versatility of the USRP B210, the customization of the Lime SDR Mini, or the visual simplicity of new radio flow graphs, the possibilities are indeed endless. So, is a clone right for you? If budget is a significant constraint and your project can accommodate potential limitations, then yes. However, for professional use or critical projects, requiring uncompromised performance and direct support. The original USRP B210 is unequivocally recommended. As we conclude our journey through the world of the USRP B210, remember that software-defined radio is not just a technology. It's a gateway to innovation. 
Whether you're a seasoned developer or just beginning to explore SDR, the possibilities are endless. Thank you for watching. If you have questions or topics you'd like us to explore further, please don't hesitate to reach out. Until next time, stay curious and keep innovating. Now, back to Patrick for some final words. Thank you, Emma. Well, I hope you enjoyed this novel presentation on exploring the USRP B210, unveiling the power of software-defined radio. I say that this was a novel presentation because it was presented entirely by a large language model. Emma and I are LLM, synthesized voices. The dialogue script for the presentation was created by Lama 3.1 Nemotron 70B, LLM, from a simple prompt of asking it to produce a 10-minute presentation with the title Exploring the USRP B210 Unveiling the Power of Software Defined Rate There was a dual agenda behind today's presentation. First, it was to alert you to the various advanced SDR systems available and the merits of purchasing a much cheaper clone device with identical functionality. Secondly, to demonstrate that large language models in the right hands can produce amazing results even in creating content for an amateur television segment presentation. Finally, Emma and I would sincerely like to thank you for watching this presentation. Take care and stay curious.